Hello everyone, welcome back to Horsepower Obsessed. My name is Justin and today we're gonna talk about the C8 Corvette, the fact that Motor Trend just dynoed it and how impressive the numbers that it put down were. All right, guys, so as you know, the 2020 C8 Corvette puts down the 495 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque. That's what Chevrolet has told us that the engine in the C8 Corvette will make. Now, as you guys know, the manufacturer claims on any engine out there is always at the crank, not at the wheels. Through the transmission, you typically lose around 15% of that horsepower, leaving you with a little bit less than what the manufacturer claims at the crank. In this case, Motor Trend is testing the C8 Corvette on the dyno to find that that 495 horsepower number is actually underrated. What I mean by that is the car is creating much more than 495 horsepower at the crank and maybe even more than 495 horsepower at the wheels, which is incredibly impressive, but it comes with a caveat. There is a couple different problems with this particular test, but we'll get into that in a second. So the first run that Motor Trend does on the dyno with the C8 Corvette exposes 558 horsepower and 515 pound-feet of torque at the wheels. Now that is incredibly high, but when you do the math and figure out what this car is making at the crank, it comes out to 656 horsepower and 606 pound-feet of torque. That's mind-blowing for a naturally aspirated V8 engine. Now right off the bat, I get skeptical because Chevy has rated this engine officially at 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque. If it's actually creating 656 horsepower and 606 pound-feet of torque at the crank, then there's something wrong. GM can't underrate an engine by that much. Now, before we get too much into it, yes, manufacturers do underrate their engines from time to time, but it's never by 160 horsepower and over 130 foot-pounds of torque. Typically, if it's underrated, you're talking about somewhere between 10 and 30 horsepower at most. This is incredible. So there's got to be something wrong, right? Well, let's move on. So Motor Trend does another two runs on the dyno. This time, they move into fifth gear, which they actually estimate on their own should be the closest to a one-to-one -one gear ratio. So as they start the run, they realize in fifth gear, the car is still making 558 horsepower and 512 foot-pound at the wheels, which is very similar to their first run, and it still puts the numbers at the crank around 656 horsepower and 602 foot-pounds of torque, which is still obviously much higher than what Chevy tells us this engine should make. So what's going on here? They do two more runs, also done in fifth gear, which reads 561 horsepower, 515 foot-pounds, and then 556 horsepower and 523 foot-pounds of torque, which still translates to over 660 horsepower and 606 pound-feet of torque, which is still too high. The next thing they do at Motor Trend is they decide to try sixth gear instead of fifth, just to see what the differences would actually be. The first run in sixth gear gives them 478 horsepower and 536 pound-feet of torque. Now that's much closer to what I would expect this car to create, but it's still high. With the 15% drivetrain loss calculated, that still puts the car at making 562 horsepower and 630 pound-feet of torque at the crank, which is still much too high for what GM has rated this engine at. And then their final run, again in sixth gear, still yields 478 horsepower and 544 foot-pounds at the wheels. And again, with that 15% drivetrain loss calculated in, it would still be making 562 horsepower and 640 foot-pounds of torque at the crank. Really, really high numbers for a stock car. Motor Trend goes on to say that they couldn't come up with a conclusion other than the fact that the engine makes a lot more power than the advertised 495 horsepower and 470 foot-pounds of torque. After talking with GM, Motor Trend comes to the conclusion that fifth gear is actually their closest four one-to-one -one gear ratio dyno runs. Now, fifth gear actually puts them at 0 0.953, so that is as close to a one-to-one -one as you're gonna get. And if you remember right, 
Fifth gear was the dyno run that they ran, 558 horsepower and 512 foot-pounds at the wheels, which still puts this car at 656 horsepower and 602 foot-pounds at the crank. Now that's with Motor Trend running this in fifth gear, which GM is telling them is the closest to a one-to-one -one gear ratio. Now that really only leaves two options left. Number one, they have an incredible amount of horsepower being made out of this engine and they have way underrated it. That is the least likely of the two options in my opinion. Option number two is since this is a Mustang dyno, it can be manipulated by the user to show specific numbers. Now, I'm not saying that that's what Motor Trend did, but it can be done by accident, etc. With the Mustang Dyno, there are multiple different adjustments that could be made to have the numbers be higher or lower. I doubt anybody at Motor Trend would do it on purpose, but if something accidentally got changed, these numbers could be off. I'm Miguel Cortina, Managing Editor of Motor Trend in Español. And I'm Kim Reynolds, uh, Testing Director of Motor Trend. So today we're going to talk about the surprising results that we got from taking the Corvette to the dyno. So we're wrapping up Car of the Year and we have the mid-engine Corvette one more day. We decided to take it to the real MPG test, but it turns out that they don't have the right equipment for it. So our plan B is to go to the dyno. The first question was what gear ratio to use. Yeah, we called Chris Walton. Chris's best guess was to do it in fifth gear. We did four runs in fifth gear and then runs five and six were done in sixth gear. I was there with, with Angus, Angus McKenzie, who's our international bureau chief, and we see ridiculous numbers. In terms of torque, it went from 515 at the wheels, which means it's about 606 pound-feet of torque at the crank. About 558 horsepower, which means after drivetrain losses, it's 650 horsepower. So I think the takeaway here is that the Corvette is producing about 150 more horsepower than what GM is telling us. We couldn't just sit on this and scratch our heads and, and say this is a ringer. So we called Chevy engineers to find out what was going on. And they actually found that this engine was well within tolerance. So there was nothing out of sorts with this thing. It wasn't super tuned. It was a very ordinary Corvette engine. So after the conversation with General Motors, uh, what we finally discovered is the difference between the SAE certified measurements that they're reporting and what we saw uh, is the, the methodology. The engine was certified by the Society of Automotive Engineers, the SAE. And so it, the SAE acts like a, as a third party and follows these super strict rules. A normal dyno pull, as, as you, you witnessed, you put the car on rollers and you tie it down and you run it. The SAE certified method, the car doesn't just accelerate quickly through its RPM range, but it, it goes through steps where it runs at certain RPM levels all the way up to redline. So that's much more stressful on, on the engine. It's generating a lot more heat. So you're gonna end up with lower numbers. And so these 495 horsepower and 470 pound-feet of torque are given to Chevy, and so Chevy has to stick with those numbers. It's not Chevy coming out and saying, our car is making this. It's actually the Society of Automotive Engineers saying, this is how much your engine makes. Right, right. So which of these numbers is true? The 495 that Chevrolet is claiming or the 650 that we saw? I'm leaning more towards the 650 that we saw but also to make sure that the car that we got wasn't a ringer. We're gonna be following up with this story in the future. So once Corvette owners get their cars, we're gonna ask them to come in to the same dyno. We'll pay for the dyno runs, and we'll see if their car is making the same amount of horsepower and torque numbers that our Corvette was making. Right, so it's 650 with a footnote. Yes, with an, an asterisk. Right. I mean, regardless if your Corvette has 495 horsepower or 650, you're still getting a really good car that's, that drives amazing. Yeah, a car that does 2.8 seconds to 60 miles per hour. That's the number that really matters. 
Motor Trend actually addresses this a little bit in this article and actually says that a couple days later, they talked to GM engineers and they provided two different reasons for this discrepancy of power. The first one is, is that when the Corvette C8 is cold, it actually produces more horsepower than when it's hot. Of course, we all know that, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense here because Motor Trend saw similar numbers after six runs in a row and the car was pretty hot by the end of the second run. And with naturally aspirated engines, the heat doesn't matter quite as much as it would with a supercharged or turbocharged engine. It's not going to generate as much and kill as much power. The other explanation is that Chevrolet certifies most of its engines through the SAE, or Society of Automotive Engineers, which follows a strict set of rules and standards to determine the horsepower and torque ratings. In other words, the SAE acts as an independent party that's present during the engine tests and is the one who determines the final output ratings. Their testing does not involve a simple pull from idle to redline either. Instead, RPM are slowly ramped up and allowed to stabilize before accelerating further. This process results in significantly more heat generation than any single pull from Motor Trend's six different dyno runs. And for that reason alone, the engineers say it's not uncommon for single chassis dyno pools to register higher output. Now, again, I'm not sure how legit this is because every car I've ever had, high horsepower or not, it will put down on the dyno about what GM rated the engine at, minus that 10 to 15% drivetrain loss. In this case, it is much, 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 much lower than that. Motor Trend ends their article by saying that there will be plenty of testing to come with the C8 Corvettes. So stay tuned because they're going to get as many of these C8 Corvettes as they can on the dyno to see if they all create this kind of power or if this is just a one-off. Like I said, guys, I'd love to see a car that was this underrated. I'd love to have a C8 Corvette creating over 600 horsepower out of a naturally aspirated engine, but I can't help but be unsure with these numbers. I recently ran my Corvette ZR1 on the dyno, and while it did very well for a stock car, the numbers were nowhere near this far off. Chevrolet rates their engines at a certain amount of horsepower, and typically, even if you have a factory monster, it's not going to be much higher than what they tell you it's going to be. It's pretty interesting to see this information coming out already. We already know what gear is going to be closest to a one-to-one -one ratio. So as soon as you guys get your C8 Corvettes, throw it up on the dyno, and now you know fifth gear is your closest to one-to-one. -to -one. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about what we talked about, shoot them in the comments section down below, or send me an email, horse.power.obsessed at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Let me know what you think about these numbers, though. Do you think Motor Trend's accurate with these? Do you think that this engine is actually going to produce that much more horsepower than what GM says? Let me know down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, guys, please do. I'm going to have loads of C8 information coming for you very soon here, and you're not going to want to miss it. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next upload.